Hello, and welcome to the Nutrition Diva podcast. I'm your host, Monica Reinagel, and our show today has been generously sponsored by Audible. Audible Audible.com is the perfect solution for people who love to read but never seem to have enough time because you can listen to those books you've been wanting to read while you're on the go at the gym, during your commute. Audible.com provides over 250,000 titles from all the leading audiobook publishers, broadcasters, entertainers, magazine, and newspaper publishers. For example, if you're trying to develop healthier eating habits, Gretchen Rubin's book, Better Than Before, has some really great strategies and insights. And unlike a streaming or a rental service, with Audible, you own your books, so you can access your books anytime and anywhere right from your smartphone. Audible.com is offering a free 30-day trial membership. Just go to audiblepodcast.com slash diva to start your free trial today. Again, you can show your support for the Nutrition Diva podcast and get a free 30-day trial at audiblepodcast.com slash diva. When you're trying to make good choices about food and nutrition, you sometimes find yourself in a situation where you feel like you have to choose between competing benefits and or risks but often these nutritional dilemmas that we tie ourselves into knots over are really not that big of a dilemma after all. For example, I got an email just this week from a woman who was in a quandary over vegetable juice. On the one hand, she had read that nutrients are better absorbed from juice than they are from whole foods. On the other hand, because juicing removes most of the fiber from the vegetables, the natural sugars in vegetable juice are much more quickly absorbed, and this could potentially lead to a blood sugar spike. What a pickle. Actually, not really. Let's look a little bit more closely at the details here. Let's say you've made yourself a nice glass of fresh carrot juice. That's a whopping 45,000 international units of vitamin A which is about a nine-day supply. However, the sugars in carrot juice are absorbed into your bloodstream very quickly, and when it comes to blood sugar, slower is usually better. Now, in a past episode on juicing, I suggested that you might consume vegetable juice together with higher fiber foods as a way to slow down the absorption of those sugars. Now, it is true that the fiber might reduce your absorption of that vitamin A by as much as 40%, but because there is so much in there to begin with, you'd still be absorbing five days worth of vitamin A in a single shot. Look, even 60% of that much beta carotene is still a heck of a lot of beta carotene. And when I think of all the other benefits of fiber, everything from promoting digestive health to feeding the beneficial bacteria in my gut, that's a trade-off I'm happy to make. Here's another example of a nutrition trade-off that's worth making. A couple of years ago now, I was invited to speak about nutrition to a parents group at a local school. And at one point, I asked if there were any questions, and an attractive young mom raised her hand, and she told us that she had started making homemade kale chips. And to her surprise and her delight, her kids absolutely loved them. Baked kale chips had become their favorite after-school snack. They begged for them. But then she read that heat can destroy nutrients— So now she was worried that she wasn't doing her kids any favors because she was cooking all the nutrition out of that kale. Now, let's just back up the lens for a moment. This woman's children were coming home after school and begging for kale chips. Is there really a problem here? Kale is a very nutrient-dense food, and even if some of those nutrients were being reduced by half, which is unlikely, every serving of baked kale chips is still providing a whopping helping of vegetable nutrition. Plus, what's the alternative? Something tells me that a big bowl of raw kale leaves is not going to go over quite as well. I think this is another nutritional trade-off that we can well afford to make. In general, I think people worry way too much about cooking the nutrition out of their vegetables. The way I see it, if you are cooking vegetables, that suggests that you are actually eating vegetables. So I'm not worried about a few milligrams of vitamin C being lost in the process. Some nutrition trade-offs, such as the two examples I've given here, are easily resolved because there's a big difference in the relative impact of the two sides of the trade-off. 
when the trade-off is between two things of more equal weight, it does get a little trickier. And in those cases, it often comes down to your personal situation and your goals. Let's say that you have to choose between a black bean soup that's high in fiber, but also high in sodium, and a chicken noodle soup that's low in sodium, but also low in fiber. Well, if you have high blood pressure, you might decide to sacrifice the fiber and go with the chicken noodle to avoid the extra sodium. But if you have normal blood pressure and you don't need to restrict sodium, the black bean soup might be the better choice for you. And of course, it's sometimes possible to find a third option which avoids the trade-off entirely, such as a lower sodium bean soup. Do you find yourself with a nutritional dilemma? Are you wondering whether a particular trade-off is worth it? Hey, send me an email or post your question on the Nutrition Diva Facebook page and we'll figure it out together. You'll find a transcript of today's show, including links to the research I cited and related episodes of the Nutrition Diva podcast at quickanddirtytips.com. And you'll find me at nutritionovereasy.com. And I always look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for listening this week and remember to eat something good for me.